Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at an example for closing entries. Why are closing entries important? Well, for one thing, you need to, to know them for your financial accounting, intermediate accounting, and the CPA exam. However, understanding the closing entries could help you understand how retained earnings work and what happened to what, what we called temporary accounts. So it's not only you want to know how the closing process occur, but you want to understand the concept, how it's being done and what accounts are affected and how everything affects the retained earnings. So let's take a look at this example to illustrate this concept. ABC Company has year-end account balances of sales revenue 900,000, interest revenue 10,500, cost of goods sold 535, administrative expenses 210, income tax expense 38,100, and dividend of 20,000. Beginning retained earnings is 105. So I'm, I'm going to ask you to prepare the journal entries for the closing and compute the ending retained earnings. Now, why is this example straightforward and simple? For one thing, I'm giving you all temporary accounts. What does that mean? It means all the accounts that are listed in this example, such as sales revenue, interest revenue, cost of goods sold, administrative expenses, income tax expenses, as well as dividend are considered Temporary account. Temporary means we close them. We close them at the end of the accounting period. You have to be careful on your exam. You might be giving assets. You might be given liabilities. You might be giving common stock. Well, those accounts are permanent. We don't close them. So the first thing in the closing process you need to understand is which of my accounts are temporary, which of my accounts are permanent. I'm going to give you a shortcut, a hint. Anything that goes on the balance sheet, do not close anything that goes on the balance sheet do not close so any account that's considered a balance sheet account you don't close everything else gets closed why because everything else either goes on the income statement or the retained earnings statement but you don't close retained earnings because retained earnings goes on the balance sheet ending retained earnings so this is what you need to know now what is the closing process? Well, the closing process consists of four steps. I'm going to go over four steps by illustrating this concept. Well, the first step is to close any revenue, any revenue, or sometimes they call them in your textbook or CPA review course, credit balance income statement. What does that mean? Well, we know that revenues, well, hopefully we know this, we know that revenues will have a credit balance. Now, also, we need to know that in addition to revenues, we could have gains. Gains would also have a credit balance. So any credit balance income statement account gets closed. Now, in this example, we only have two account, which are sales revenue and interest revenue that are considered revenue, which is income statement with a credit balance. Now, let's take a look at sales revenue. If sales revenue is 900,000 credit balance, how do I make this go down to zero? Well, what do I have to do? I'm going to have to debit this account 900,000 to make it go down to zero. So what do I do with these balances? I debit them. So I debit their balances. So this is the debit. This is the debit. And what do I credit? I credit income summary. Now, certain textbook or certain CPA review courses, what they do rather than crediting closing to in closing revenue to income summary, they close revenues to retained earnings. And if you if, if you're in if it's in your textbook or if it's in your CPA review course, they are closing it to retained earnings. That's fine. Close it to retained earnings. We're going to end up in the same place. But I'm going to be using income summary to illustrate the concept to really and explain the concept. So step one is to close your credit income statement balances to income summary, usually close revenues to income summary. And this is what we just did. So we transferred. So our revenue accounts are gone for the next period. The whole amount is transferred to an account called income summary. This is step one. Step two in the closing process. Remember, we have four steps is to close all debit income statement balances to income summary. Well, cost of goods sold, if you know anything about expenses, cost of goods sold will have a debit balance. So we'll have a debit balance of 535. And all expenses will have a debit balance. Now, also, in addition to the expenses, we could have losses. They have a debit balance. Also, we could have sales, returns, and allowances. They will have a debit balance. So any debit balance 
of an income statement account, any of these debit balances, guess what? We are going to close them. So they all have debit balances. So how do we close a debit balance? How do we make a debit balance go down to zero? Well, we credit that balance. Therefore, I'm going to credit cost of goods sold 535. Therefore, it's gone. I'm going to credit administrative expenses 210,000. That's gone too. I'm going to credit income tax expense 38,100. If I have a list of other expenses, losses, any debit balance accounts on the income statement, I credit them. Usually, we don't credit expenses. That's not normal, but in the closing process, we do. Now, what do we debit? We are going to debit for the total income summary. So all these balances, we debit income summary. They get close to income summary. So all the expenses are gone. So we get rid of the revenues. We get rid of the expenses. That's fine. Once again, certain textbook or certain CPA review course, they debit retained earnings automatically. That's fine if they do that. Now, so we're done with expenses, we're done with revenues, they are all transfers, so th these are all the revenues, these are all the expenses. What do we do next? Step three is to close income summary. So you need to find out what is your income summary account. Now, if you have more credits than debits, you have a credit balance. So the difference between 9, 10, 500 and 73,100 is an income summary balance of 127,400. Now, if the credit are revenues, and the debit are expenses, well, this number is also net income. So your net income is 127400 Now, what do we do with net income? We need to close it. it. It has a credit balance. How do we close credit balance? We are going to debit this credit balance. We are going to debit this credit balance. And where do we close net income? Where do net income ends up? The net income ends up in retained earnings. Therefore, I closed income summary and I transferred this account to retained earnings so i increased retained earnings and hopefully this makes sense because net income increases retained earnings so i'm done with step three step three is basically closing income summary now if you already if you transferred everything to retained earnings like as i told you some textbook would do then you will not have this entry because everything was transferred to retained earning and the net will be 124 127 400 this is step three step four in the closing process is closing dividend how much dividend do we have well we have dividend of dividend for this example of twenty thousand. dividend will have a debit balance so how do you close the dividend well we're gonna debit retained earnings we're gonna reduce the dividend by twenty we're gonna reduce retained earnings by twenty thousand and credit the dividend because dividend has has a debit balance we need to credit to get rid of it now what we did is we transferred everything, dividend, revenues, and expenses. Everything is transferred to retained earnings. Now I'm asking you compute the ending retained earnings. I compute the ending retained earnings, and the answer is 212,400. So this is my ending retained earnings. So why is this exercise important? Why is it important? Well, because it shows you what happened to revenues, what happened to expenses, what happened to temporary accounts, such as dividend. They all get transferred to retained earnings, which is a permanent account. Retained earning is a balance sheet account. So retained earning is a very important account because it's a cumulative account. It keeps track of the company's income, um, income which include revenues, expenses, and dividend, and ob obviously losses if you have losses rather than income over the years. I hope this recording was helpful in, a, in understanding closing retained earning. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com and work multiple choice questions that's going to help you understand, reinforce the concept. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe. Before we proceed any further, I would like to remind you, whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course nor your accounting courses. What I do is I'm a useful addition to your CPA review course. My motto is helping accounting students and CPA candidate by providing you resources, lectures, multiple choice, true, false, exercises. This is a partial list of my accounting courses. My CPA review material is aligned with your Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, so on and so forth, Miles. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation, like this recording, share it with others, connect with me on Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and if you are a CPA candidate, I do have a group me, CPA support. Please join us. Join me and other CPA candidates preparing for the exam.